a fan of camp, then Elvira needs no introduction. The Mistress of the Dark is well known for her gothic attire, valley girl accent, and graveyard puns. What you may not know is that the character was the subject of a legal battle against none other than Vampyra. In 1953, Maila Nurmi, an aspiring actress, had attended a costume party hosted by choreographer Lester Horton. Nurmi attended the masquerade dressed as a character from Charles Adams' New Yorker cartoon. Her appearance caught the eye of a TV producer, who eventually got her phone number from the designer of the topless swimsuit. Well, I did get discovered by a television producer. It was Hunt Stromberg Jr but he wanted me alone. He didn't want the entire family. And I said, well, how are we going to do this? He said, we're not going to tell Charles Adams. I said, I, I can't do that, but give me a few days. And I came back to him with the character Vampira. From the Bondage and Discipline magazine at the time, I had taken a waist cincher and an uplift bra and fishnet hose, and I'd slipped my dress, and I wore a pant leather belt, and I had a foot-long cigarette holder and long red fingernails. And I thought that's a good combination, sex and death. And she ultimately became the host for The Vampire Show, which ran from 1954 to 1955. She is perhaps most recognized from her role in Ed Wood's 1959 cult film, Plan 9 from Outer Space. I know that I was in, in front of the camera for about 15 minutes. And that's all, your, your entire on-screen appearance was shot in? Of 50, 15 silent minutes, which has given me an entire new career. Thank you, Mr. Wood. <laughs> you listening? Nermi was, by every account, eclectic and mysterious. She lied about her birthplace, modeled for artist Man Ray, had a child with Orson Welles given up for adoption, and was even the model for Maleficent. The first time that Orson saw me uh, scantily clad in a boudoir, he said, magnificent carcass. <laughs> I thought, what? Magnificent carcass indeed, in that marvelous voice of his. That's about all I have to say. I don't want to talk about his giving me clap or anything. She was also known for her friendship with James Dean, with one magazine blaming her for his death through witchcraft. He was on the Vampire Show. Yeah. He came to see you. Right. He did it because he loved you, I understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were very close with James yeah. Dean. Yeah. He Tell was my me. best friend. However, Nurmi's fame was fleeting. By late 1956, I was already not working and desperately poor, trying to live on $13 a week unemployment compensation. And by the 1960s, she was making a living installing linoleum flooring and running Vampira's Attic, an antique shop in California where she sold handmade jewelry and clothing. People used to come to your shop when you had the shop on Melrose. Well, Gracie Slick came there, and uh -huh. Little Moon Zappa came when she was five years old with her mama. Uh -huh. In 1981, Nermi was approached by KHJ-TV to revive Vampira for a new show. According to her, she was to receive an executive producer credit and wanted Lola Falana in the role. Instead, producers cast Cassandra Peterson. The show was renamed to Elvira's movie Macabre, and Nermi left the project called in Cassandra and I to sign our contracts. Right. And I took one look at her and spun on my heel and left. The show is movie macabre, and Nermi says the similarities to her show are striking. Nermi claimed that the entire Elvira persona created by Peterson, which included comedic dialogue and puns, infringed on her creation. And I know it's my creative imagination. Were it not for my creative imagination, she'd still be a bit player on the Z channel. But I would like her to cease and desist. I don't want her doing Vampira. For one thing, she's too old. So what are you going to do about it, Mike? Well, I'm suing. You are? Yeah, I'm finally suing. She, I've been trying all these years, but I was unable to get an attorney because I had no money. The character was ripped off, said her attorney, Jan Goodman, who claimed that Peterson had infringed on Nermi's trademark, public reputation, and ability to market her character. We're suing for a minimum of $10 million, or, or, or a maximum of $460 million, which is in the stratosphere there somewhere. But... What yeah, do you think? it looks good, but then you never know. You never know. The court eventually ruled in favor of Peterson, holding that likeness means actual representation of another person's appearance, and not simply close resemblance. There is no Elvira, there's only a pirated vampire, said Nermi. Yet, 
she herself claimed that Vampire's image was based on Morticia Adams and told Box Office Magazine in 1994 that she had intentionally made her character campier and sexier to avoid plagiarizing. It's said that when she refused to sell the rights to Vampira to the producers of The Addams Family, she was blacklisted. Fan clubs all over the world was nominated for an Emmy for the most outstanding new personality of the year. And uh, almost immediately afterward, I was blacklisted and never worked again, except once for Liberace. While Nermi's legacy obviously holds a special place in horror history, she was a flawed figure, a harsh critic of other women, and often blurred fact and fiction. But most importantly, who wore it best? I'll let you decide.